Hello YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla electric car video with me, Adam Well Informed. If you're new to electric cars, you're probably worried about EV range, the initial cost of buying an electric car, the lack of public charging infrastructure, or the time it takes to actually charge the car. Am I right? If I guess right, we both know that wasn't just a lucky guess. I myself was in your very shoes. Not your actual shoes, I'm talking metaphorically, of course, just because I drove a Seat Leon 1.2 hatchback just before my Tesla Model 3, and it was a wonderful little car, I don't dispute that. 99% of electric car owners today have owned a ICE vehicle prior to getting a BEV. I had the Seat for just over 5 years, and I never would have dreamed of acquiring a electric car as its successor. Well, that was before I did my own research and ended up watching a number of different YouTube videos similar to this very one. Your concerns were once my concerns, and according to this UK survey, it's not just the two of us. In fact, these were the top four concerns, and collectively, these four concerns covered a whopping 85% of the respondents' greatest concerns regarding battery electric vehicles. So these issues are overwhelmingly the core stumbling blocks of switching from your petrol or diesel combustion car to a battery electric vehicle. So why did I end up buying a Tesla Model 3 electric car? Was it primarily for the environment? Well, actually, it's not as simple as you think, and I'm going to explain why. You may or may not know that electric cars have indeed been around for decades, but it will come as no surprise that governments around the world are pushing them today solely on its environmental factors and for the undisputed fact it emits zero tailpipe emissions so we can have cleaner breathable air very few people would dispute its environmental position i do say very little but i know some of you munchkins will still fight that corner but fortunately for all you viewers today your EV environmental disaster claim doesn't actually make the top 85% of concerns, so I won't be covering that in detail today. In fact, I'm going to put this statement out there, and any existing BEV owner can correct me right now, but switching to an electric car like the Tesla Model 3 isn't just about the environment. There are actually a number of advantages of why people actually choose to own an electric car over a petrol or diesel car. I myself have heard some Tesla owners first hand and the environment wasn't even their top three reasons why they actually switched to a Tesla. It obviously is a contributing factor but it's not the biggest pull factor for some owners and that's okay. Therefore I will lay it out for you and I mean I will do my best to reassure you the average driver out there that these four big concerns are blown out of proportion and I just want to reassure you. So let's get into the meat of these concerns. Let's talk about EV range first. This is the biggest concern as per the survey, so it probably makes sense to start there. I want you to reverse the situation. Stick with me, this will all make sense in a minute. Consider your new vehicle requirements when you buy a petrol or diesel car. Do you compare the vehicle range of that ICE vehicle with another? The answer is no. If you're based in the UK like me, I can already hear the screams, yeah, but we have miles per gallon figures at them. But here's my gripe with that. Yes, you have the MPG figure, but that isn't your rated range. It's a figure based on fuel efficiency of the vehicle, not the range. But it gets even better because we can actually times the MPG figure by the capacity of the fuel tank just to get an idea of the vehicle's range. Job done. Mission complete, right? Uh, take it easy, Tiger. Let's take a look at an example. My go-to here is a BMW 3 Series. I've found one on Auto Trader, and we can see its WLTP MPG is rated at 43.9 combined so it would achieve roughly 44 miles per gallon of fuel so how big is the fuel tank in gallons so we can finally wet this out well <laughs> that's a good question if we stick with auto trader we're told the fuel capacity in liters and not gallons so this is where the average consumer gives up they don't give a damn about working this out now and they're just not going to be bothered to work it out in full for which to wrap this up you need to convert the litre figures into gallons, then times the gallons figure by the MPG figure. And if you're still with me, I'm just going to tell you the figure. It's 569 miles. In real life circumstances, that's likely to be lower. But let's stick with the official figures for now. That's a lot of range, isn't it? Way more than an EV's range. I absolutely cannot dispute that fact. Typical EVs can go over 300 miles, some over 400 and only a single vehicle is rated over 500 miles at this, at this current time, and that is the Lucid Air. 
Now, you're thinking, how am I reassuring you now to buy an electric car and have a rated range potentially less than your current car? That's because typically the average driver will do 30 miles a day or 10,000 miles a year. Therefore, if you're not testing the limit of your vehicle's range, you'll rarely, if ever, see the benefits of that range advantage. I'll look at my own circumstances. I have around 260 miles rated range in my Tesla Model 3. I've tested the limits on just two occasions in 14 months. So I had to sit and charge the supercharger four times in 14 months. And here's a statement for you. I reckon if I had to refuel at a petrol station over that whole 14 month period, I would have spent more time at a petrol station than using a supercharger for these four times. Say, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Interesting, isn't it? That leads me to my next point, time to charge. My Tesla Model 3 charges at a slower rate of 170 kilowatts, but a long range Model 3 can charge at 250 kilowatts, and some vehicles like the Hyundai i 5 can go as high as 350 kilowatts in a single session. If that's just a number to you, essentially the higher that number, the more juice it can consume in a charging session at a given time. That high rate can't actually be sustained and does taper off over time if you're using a cheap supercharger or a rapid charger to achieve those maximum figures. To give you some context, a 10 to 80% charge would take a Tesla Model 3 SR Plus around 20 minutes to charge. I can hear those screams again in my ear. This time the screams are expressing dissatisfaction at 20 minutes charging and they can refuel a petrol car in as little as 5 minutes. Then this brings me to the reality of the situation. Whilst the above example, again, is true, a rapid charge can take 15 minutes longer than refueling a car. But if you're an average driver and you're doing an average 30 miles a day, most people will have access to off-road parking and then, it, then they'll be able to charge from home. That time taken to charge can drop from 20 minutes to about 20 seconds at that very point. Is that because home charging is faster, Adam? Hell no, it isn't. It's way slower. So why does it only take 20 seconds? That's because it will take 20 seconds to insert the cable and not to dedicate your time to charging the car. At that point, you're not waiting around. You're I don't know, playing with your kids, watching TV, even sleeping. Therefore, it's only wasted time if you're truly restricted by the charging session itself and you know, you're not doing anything else more productive or what you truly want to do at that given time. Even if you're on a long road trip, a Tesla Model 3 is rated at just over 300 miles range. If you drove an average of 60 miles per hour continuously, it would take 5 hours to get to 0 miles remaining. Even taking into account real life conditions, if you're lasting say 4 hours, you're going to need to urinate. And I can't believe I'm actually fact checking this right now, but apparently it's healthy to urinate six to eight times a day. So on average, you're going to need to wee every three or four hours. Not to mention a healthy break from driving is advised from government agencies. So don't be a hero. Go for a wee, grab a coffee and get driving again. Remember, if you're not waiting around for charging to be finished and you fill that time productively, say going for your wee and grabbing your coffee, are you actually wasting time on that basis? I'd probably spent more time driving and refueling at a petrol station than I have done charging my Tesla Model 3 at home. And that is the real mic drop moment of this whole time to charge situation. It's not always as it seems on the surface. Now, we can't talk about charging time and, char and supercharging unless we talk about public charging infrastructure. I think I can wrap this one up pretty quickly too, just like most of you. My car was used within the average yearly mileage of 10,000 miles a year. I had to rely on public rapid charging four times in 14 months. The rest was done overnight at home where it cost me the least. Admittedly, I have used some free public charges, but only because they were free at my destination and not because I absolutely needed it for range purposes. I probably started twitching because I could probably save myself 35 pence from charging. Oh dear me, Adam. Therefore, if you're an average driver, most of you will have the ability to charge from home. If you don't, then some of you will have access to charging at your work address instead. If you don't fall into those two categories, then thankfully there is a growing portfolio of public charging options available, with some free charges being uniquely placed at your local supercharger or at your local retail park, so you're not going to go out of your way for a charger.
rapid charges and then solely used for quick and on the go occasions. Ultimately, in my eyes, I don't think many will disagree that there does need to be more public infrastructure on EV charging. However, does it bring the whole EV movement to its knees? No, because most of us do charge at home or at work. Rapid charges are always going to be needed, more so around the motorway network to support those long road trip situations. However, I think more funding should also go to support those who don't have access to off-street parking to help level that convenience playing field. I think everyone would accept more public charging, but in reality, I've hardly used the existing ones on offer at this given time. Having availability is just comforting to know that there are plenty en route to your destination. And if there is wild demand for EVs, you can expect infrastructure to also get wild too, because ultimately there is a strong business case for having and expanding a charging network. If there's money to be made, then guess what? There's probably going to be a business there trying to make money. So before I state my final thoughts and hopefully set up some pricing concerns, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you like to test the content like this. If you want Ecomp Calc's closed beta, don't forget to follow the socials in the description below. Let's just get back to finishing this juicy video. The initial purchasing cost is a little daunting. It's a little more than what meets the eye and that's because the cost of ownership blows ice ownership out of the water. If you want to see how my first 12 months was, see my video on the screen now for evidence of just how cheap it can be to run in your first year. If you want a real hands-on comparison between a similarly spec BMW 3 Series 330i M Sport and a Tesla Model 3, the Model 3 is around 5,000 more to buy as a starting price, and I'm talking about the long, long range here. However, using Ecomp Calc's app, we can actually integrate the purchase costs, and if we use the brand's advertised PCP finance option with £4,500 deposit, then combining the running costs, the Tesla Model 3 will save you almost £60 a month, and that can grow to £90 with an optimised off-peak tariff like Octopus Go. Therefore, don't judge a book by its cover. If you're comparing a like-for-like -like EV option, it's likely to smash it out of the park from a cost of ownership side, so the average cost per month for illustration really does help highlight that fact. I'm not even considering the vastly lower maintenance requirements of an EV, such as less brake pad replacements thanks to regen braking, etc. The advantages of EVs are more than just environmentally friendly cars. It's insane. Prices are not as low as they need to be, admittedly. But it's not a blanket argument that costs are just flatlinely too high right now in every case, because adding all the costs together can give you a true reflection of EV ownership and its advantages. Before we move on to the conclusion, this is literally the power of Econ Calc. You can literally input your own finance deal and boom, it's done. Here's an illustration for you. If you do want to try it, you know, go to the socials, drop us a follow and then DM us so you can get access to the beta ahead of its public release. So to conclude, I'm a reasonable person. I know I probably haven't convinced all 85% of you. Law of odds just isn't in my favor. However, even if I've helped reassure just 10% of you, then that is a real win because once you've done your research and you test drive an EV that you like the look of, say a Tesla Model 3, then it really will sell itself. Hopefully, I've reassured you that range is not everything to the average driver. The time to charge isn't an issue for most people with off-street parking or charging facilities at work. Public charging is used less than you think. And finally, just because it costs you more to buy doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be more expensive than your petrol car because don't forget, you've got to incorporate all them running costs to give out the true reflection of the actual cost of the vehicle. Let me know in the comment section below if this video helped you. And if you don't know what to comment on, then don't hesitate just to enter the phrase electric cars and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for getting this far in the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends and family if you found it useful. Otherwise, you guys have been great. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.